I was just uh, gonna call you and have you come out to our uh, scene here. Um, not really, but we just had to had to hold the guy down. He was uh, was uh, <clears throat> going crazy with him, uh, coming off here in the moment. Wouldn't go in the back of the uh, <clears throat> squad. Those the words of Derek Chauvin. This is after George Floyd has been taken away in an ambulance, and we get a glimpse or get it into his mindset why he kept his knee on George Floyd's neck for that nine minutes and 29 seconds, a sizable guy on something you heard going crazy. So let's, because uh, what we're about to show you here leads to the question, what was the mindset of the other officers? It's when things escalate. George Floyd does not want to get in that squad car. So we'll let you watch this squad car st uh, struggle via body cam footage. And we'll get our panel's take coming out. I'm not the kind of guy, man. Again, to note the shocking, disturbing nature of, of all this video. G. Casares, again, with, in your vast experience, have we ever had a case where there is so much video, where we get to watch so much, and that's what the jury's going to be going through? No, never. I have never seen so much video uh, from cell phone cameras, from city surveillance, from surveillance from the restaurant across the street. Uh, no, never. And, and, and it gives you so many vantage points. I just saw video and what you just played that I don't think I've ever seen before. Just some angles there that your producers put together. Uh, it was quite a struggle. I mean, there was a struggle there. And I think we can expect the defense is probably because they've got to talk about the state of mind of the defendant. He didn't take the stand. We don't know what he was thinking. Those few words that you just showed, I'm sure the defense will go line by line to show that that was his state of mind. But even with that struggle, as things changed, as we learned through all of the police experts, you have to change accordingly to make sure everything continues to stay reasonable. Yeah, Darren, would you pick up on that point? You're a law enforcement analyst, you watch that squad car struggle again, what could have been different, done differently? This is guy's good. We have to think in the perspective of de-escalation. How could the officers effectively de-escalate the situation? It was clear that George Floyd didn't want to be placed in a vehicle, that's okay. I've been in situations like this in the past, whereas I've tried or attempted to put people in the backseat of a squad car and they were unwilling. So what I did was I brought them back outside and I started the conversation piece. That's where the de-escalation comes into play. It was not employed properly because if you remember in the earlier part of the interaction, George Floyd was sitting down on next to the wall and he was able to speak to the officers It was fine. Even when George Floyd was removed from the back seat of the squad car, mm -hmm. he said thank you. So that tells you that there was some level of a rapport that you could have developed to right. de-escalate the situation. He was scared to if death. He'd been shot by an officer be, before. Or, or I should say it's going to be a non-starter. You can bring in what we refer to as a patrol wagon. The patrol wagon has a larger passenger compartment, and that would have been the best alternative. There you go. But remember, time is on your side. Hmm. 
All right. He's a big Much man. That was kind of a small back seat for him. We'll be deliberating soon. What will they be going over? And what from the defense side is sticking with that jury? We'll talk about that and more coming up. You're watching our coverage of the Derek Show.